everybody. Welcome to another uh, Ride Along with Goggles tutorial. And this one is going to be on my game settings and what, what I use and how I set my game up. And bear in mind, um, uh, it's all uh, dependent on your system. So memory, CPU speed, your graphics card is huge in this game because really relies on it heavily. Um, yeah, not so much the CPU. It only uses one one uh, core. So it's really unfortunate. So if you've got like multi-core CPU, it's kind of wasted until they update the game engine. So anyway, what we're going to do, I'm going to just run down the settings I use. I'm going to start with, uh, you know, things like gameplay and whatever. And we'll try and go through the settings and give an explanation if we can. Um what they are and why, why I use them and if I don't really understand it I'll just explain you know why I have something turned on or off to the best of my ability and uh, hopefully it'll help so this is the uh, SCS 389 with the uh, optional uh, accessory pack the uh, what's it called Peterbilt 389 accessories uh, or accessory Peterbilt whatever you can find it in Steam or I can put a link you can really doll the old 389 up. Got a Zmod engine in here, so this is an example of sound. So, yeah, that sounds pretty good. It's a uh, uh, 3406E, which is I'm really starting to like. I do like his uh, DD60 probably best, but anyway, uh, enough of that. Let's get into the game settings. So we'll escape to the menu. I'm going to go down to the options. And we're going to start with uh, vol with the volume. We'll, we'll end on the video settings because I like you to stick, you know, that's probably your biggest interest. But I want you to see the other ones too instead of just taking off after you get the audio. Because there's other things here that are important. So in here, you have your master volume. And I generally run mine around here. Now I know that you know, Zmod and other guys who put out engines say, oh, you got to have everything slammed over to the right and move the certain things back. This is what I like, and you can take uh, screenshots or photos or whatever you like, but this is, you know, if you're watching my videos, this is where things are at. And with this 3406E, I just put it in here, I would turn the turbo slider down because it's got a really loud turbo, and if you're, uh, the turbo whistles. So what you hear there is that whistling sound that this turbo spin at an extreme RPM, like, you know, 100, 120,000 RPM. So they make quite a, quite a whistle. And uh, if you're up on the uh, chase cam or view or pivot, you know, roof cam, you'll really hear it. So with uh, quieter turbo engines like a 3406B or something, I'll turn this up pretty high. Till I, I like to just hear it. I don't like to be inundated with it. And uh, so for this engine, should be down around here. Uh, we just heard the engine run and you could hear the turbo at idle. But if we were under load and up on the roof, you'd rarely hear it. And even in the cab, cruising down the interstate at 75, it would be a little obtrusive. So, truck exhaust volume, volume and engine volume, I usually keep these fairly well in line with the master volume. So, wherever the master volume is, I'm going to run these there, uh, depending on the engine. So, if you run into an engine that, you know, you realize, yeah, I'm not hearing my voice navigator right, or I'm not hearing um, ambient sounds or traffic the way I thought I should, you can turn the engine volume down and the exhaust volume down. Now, I usually um, would turn the engine volume slightly less than the exhaust volume because it gives the engine a bit better of a um, sort of the muffled rumbly sort of sound and less of the high end clattery noise from the injectors, etc. So, you know, that, that clattering you hear of a diesel is, you know, the injectors firing because they, they go off at a massive pressure to atomize that fuel and, and get the ignition happening because, as you know, diesels don't have spark plugs. They rely on compression to light off the uh, charge and by compression, it huge compression ratio, so it takes a, a, a volume of air and crunches it down. And as it does, the heat increases. So it gets super hot by the time the piston comes to the top and they squirt the fuel in and bang, there you go. That's your spark. <laughs> anyway, getting sidetracked. Um, 
so truck effects volume i keep all of this other stuff down a little bit because i don't like it intruding in you know there's all these sort of things that you can hear rattling around and world sound volumes and everything to me it's a bit of a distraction and when you're actually in a truck you're not going to hear it to the effect if you lined all these up with the master volume to me it's a little unrealistic in that you don't hear all of that in there like you you don't you know uh, trailer noise volume yeah you might hear a bit uh traffic volume you can hear a little bit world sounds volume you, you know this could be down here because you gotta you know any, any truck i've owned it's not been quiet and so the fact that, like if you want to turn the world volume up to this level to me is a little unrealistic but that's just me you know you do what works for you experiment with them if you're tired of something you can just turn it off like i have the music volume that's all that ding, 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 you know that stuff playing away in the background you can just mute it if you don't want i have it turned down so you can well just mute it um yeah the the uh, ui music volume that one too i just you know could just mute it it's the same thing i haven't turned right down uh, I turned my voice navigator right up all the way because to, it comes in pretty quiet anyway. And so the radio volume is set here. And I also have in my dash panel, if you've seen that, I've got a radio volume uh, uh, rotary encoder on there too. So I find a place to set this that works and then I can mess with the fine tune it when I'm listening in the game. So you put that where you want to put it. That's going to be your in-game music, um, and that about covers volume. I, you know, I don't do much other than that. Voice navigation. I'm using uh, the Z Mod TomTom uh, Tom Lorry. Uh, I, I really like it. It's it's not annoying, uh, although she does send you astray sometimes. So, <laughs> uh, oh, we could preview it, couldn't we? Oh, that's just the volume level. Uh, speed warning, I don't use it. CB radio, I don't use it. It's uh, voice over noise, whatever. Roger, yeah, but I don't do anything with it. Other audio settings, his backup beeper is on rumble strips. I don't know why they say stripes. It's called rumble strips. And that's that uh, uh, little grooves that they uh, put along the side of the highway or sometimes in the center line. They And when your tires hit them, you'll hear it. And it'll, you know, alert you to the fact you might be drifting out of your lane. I leave it on. It's realistic. Open window noise I like. Noise of air flowing. I don't know why that's down in here. Maybe what do I have to do to get that to go? Don't know. Maybe it's a uh, sound mod I'm using is knocking it out. The reverb effect in the cabin. I have that on. And you'll see sometimes when I'm driving a particular engine that has a high resonance. Uh, in a video, I will actually crack the window, and just like in real life, it reduces the uh, reverb effect, which is really re super realistic, and I like that. So, for example, I can't remember which engine it is. Maybe it's a 3406B or the DD60, one of the two. If you're pulling on a hill and uh, you're getting a lot of, uh, you know, your ears are kind of reverberating a bit. Depends on, you know, how, I guess how good your headset or uh, sound card is but it'll be a little bit annoying just like it is in real life because you can get in those situations where depending on the sound of your truck and or what one you're driving if it's not your own uh, you can get an annoying reverberation you, see, you crack the windows and it equalizes that with outside air pressure and uh, reduces it so that actually works in my game so that's pretty cool you'll see you'll see it happen in the videos every now and then uh, that just says what I'm using for my audio driver, and I have the uh, Razer Black Shark uh, Pro headset, and I'm using the uh, their audio driver comes with the it, it senses it when you plug it in, and installs it. Uh, it's cool. Or did it come with a? No, it doesn't come with a disc. It senses it, and you go to their website and install it. I believe. I don't really remember, but anyway, that's what I use for audio. And if you want to, at any point, you know, just rewind and go look at whatever it was. So let's see what's next. Uh, gameplay. So in gameplay, uh, I don't have yeah, this stuff. It doesn't mean much to me. Uh, I don't spend any time looking at it. 
uh, game settings. So I have fatigue and traffic off because, uh, for especially for doing videos, and I'll turn it on when I want to do realistic on my own. But for videos and stuff, it's really annoying. You know, you're uh, it's a distraction really, and I can't be doing the fatigue simulation, or I'd never be doing a video when I want to do a video. Because uh, I like to start in the morning, get the video done in daylight, because not many people like to see a video at night, although I love driving at night. I just love it, except for you don't see any scenery and stuff. But I drove a whole lot at night in real life. Uh, when You know, my biggest highway trips, because I did hot shots, which meant I had to be somewhere and meet a crane first thing in the morning with my flat deck and uh, get offloaded somewhere that was a distance away. So I would drive all night. To get there for like 8 a.m. crane time or whatever i loved it i just loved that little world i loved being in the me in the truck me in the gauges and my thoughts and my radio it was a good world and then the next day i'd always you know i'd drive back home in the daytime and i would get my daytime driving in no problem but being forced to drive at night i i grew to like it and uh it was just to me it was kind of comforting you know booting down the road in your little cocoon and uh just not not much traffic and just you doing your thing a lot of driving out in the in the you know the boonies going to you know places that uh a lot of oil field stuff it's not always it's not on the main roads anyway let's keep going uh, i have preferred job length that uh, the medium setting because it gives me a range of jobs that I can fit into a video and um, without having to edit it out and so if you want to increase that and do the long hauls that's what I used to do when I first got into the game I had that maxed because you know it's all about making my company and having all my drivers and them busy and me doing long hauls trying to get the money level up so I could buy truck mods and trailers and outfit new garages and so I just leave it in medium for my own purposes. Uh, the root advisor speed limit is the truck limit, not the car speed limit. So I want to see uh, what my truck speed limit is because it might be 60 as opposed to 70. So I want to know. And uh, root advisor speed warning. So that you know, tells you if you're going too fast or whatever. Automatic parking dialogue. I bring that up because it's going to ask you uh, skip parking or you know where do you um, can you do anything or are you going to take the easy route or not now I'm in a hurry just offload it uh, keep root advisor hidden uh, I don't have that selected so it comes up and sometimes I wonder if that's smart or not because I can turn it on with all my dash panel I might try that a heavy cargo warning screen is if you're going to go and do a heavy haul or whatever I leave it on because it's not it doesn't bother me here's another one I'm probably going to try turning off is I have north locked on my GPS and so when you look at the GPS you you know that and this only works when you're zoomed in I think you got to zoom in to the third and fourth levels for that to work on zoom level one and two I don't believe it works it just shows the view straight ahead but when you get into the zoomed out view, it will lock north. So if you're going southeast, uh, you see that in the view that, uh, you know, what you see to the southeast is where you're going. And that's fairly realistic. So I, I leave that on. But I might try it, turn it off just to see what happens. Because there's times what I find, like, say, for example, this window right here is our GPS. Like, I like the cell phone one. If that's our GPS... And we're going south our little truck icons down here and the rest of the road where you're going is down here you can't see any of it what you can see is all behind you which is ridiculous like what the heck is with that can you not center the, the, our little truck icon icon and show us some more of what's ahead so i might turn north locked off and see if on the third and fourth zoom level um you know, it might show me more of the road ahead. And then I just got to get my head used to, well, that's not north anymore. I might try it. Uh, show navigation. I just have that on always. Navigation mode. I select best. And I've messed with this. And if you take small roads, that's a riot. 
but you're always going to be late. But it's fun. And uh, I think what I should do, there's a mod out there that buys you more delivery time. And I might try that mod and select small roads because, you know, you, you know, if you watch the videos, I don't do a whole lot of interstate stuff because, I don't know, to me it's, you get out on the interstate and you're a steering wheel holder and I don't mean to belittle anybody who's doing it for a living because, man, you, you know, all the power to you, you're out there and doing it and um, it's a tough, tough go. Trucking isn't easy and uh, trucking's fun in the game, but in real life it can be a chore. And uh, those guys are out there doing the long haul down the interstates, man. God love you. And uh, yeah, I salute you. But for my own type of driving that I did was a lot of small road and finding places out in the middle of nowhere. And I like to be, I like doing that in the game. But I might try that. So if you select best, what it's going to do, it's going to give you the best uh, direction uh, to your route. It's not going to take the shortest because the shortest will take you down some really bad roads that potentially bad roads that may have a low speed limit in there. Even though it's the shortest route, you may be late getting to your destination. So once again, that's one you know, use with caution or get that mod. I can't even remember what it's called, but if you, uh, you know, that would be a good, good one. Always select is uh, kind of annoying. Um, because if you're, uh, oh, sorry, that's the next thing down here, parking difficulty. Yeah, so best is just the right way to go for me, for uh, all intents and purposes. Parking difficulty is always select. So this gives you the, uh, instead of random parking, that could just throw you a curveball out of the blue. Skilled parking is what I like. Safe parking is, yeah, it's boring. But if I get a choice because of the trailer I'm pulling, Sometimes you just can't do it, even though I have I have hard parking turned on in the config file and like hard parking B doubles. And the thing that's goofy with the game, it can't differentiate between a B double and a turnpike double. So you're kind of hooped if you have the setup I'm using where you'll see in videos sometimes I've got a turnpike double on and I'm forced to try and park it until it gives me the, you know, the give up option. And I find that highly annoying. So I don't know if that's a that's a bug that can be fixed, but that's something in the config setting where it says B double, and it really means double or you know triple. Like, yeah, sure, I'm gonna back a triple flat deck up into that spot. Yeah, it's annoying. But anyway, these settings are uh, you know parking difficulty. I I like the option always select. Um, random road events. I have it on just low. It's you know, like if you have it turned up, like you, the roads aren't mayhem. I don't know where you live, but everywhere you go around every corner, there's not an accident. My God. <laughs> and then detours, I just turn that off because it's highly annoying. Uh, the thing is, in real life, how many times do you get detoured? And, well, very rarely. And the fact that you have this thing and you can turn it on, well, that's fine. When I first got the game, it was on, and it drove me around the bend. I couldn't believe it. Every time we go on a trip, I'd be getting a detour. And uh, yeah, it was really annoying until I you know, figured this out. Rain probability, have it turned down once again for the videos. So, and if it does rain in the video, it's going to be short. I love the rain. I like driving in it. And when I'm putzing around on my own, I'll turn it up to about halfway and get some good rain driving in. It's fun. Uh, it's a challenge. Uh, they have the traction coefficient a little low <laughs> in the game, but it's, you know, it's close to realistic. And uh, I like the option to have that. It's nice to have it on the slider, but I just keep it turned down uh, because, you know, if you know me, I'm running flat out all the time. I'm doing skins, making this, doing that, doing videos and tutorials and stuff. And what time I have, um, I like to have this set up in the game settings, all of the settings that we're looking at set so I don't need to mess with them just to do a video. Because my driving, for the most part, that I get to do in the game, about 99% of it 
his videos. So I make a video. That's my driving. The rest of the time I'm working on skins and stuff, which is, oh, it's, you know, my ATS time, it's about 95%. So maybe higher. So it's all about doing the background work and very little about driving, unfortunately. Uh, time zones, I have it disabled and I have it disabled for JBX. So I'm going to turn that right back on. Uh, full info. I'm going to put that on. Because if you're running JBX, you got to turn that off. It'll mess your times up big time. It doesn't work. And I've started using that uh, 2.8 uh, weather, 2.8 8K weather from Steam Workshop. You'll see the description uh, in the description of the videos. Show cut scenes. Yep, I like that. Uh, show blockers. Disable with caution. I have it on right now. And I don't mind turning it off, but it saves me getting into trouble when I'm doing videos because every now and then I'll take a wrong turn and you know me <laughs> and if I have it on it keeps me from going down the wrong road and it saves messing around in a video because you guys don't need to see that uh, and for truck sh settings I'm using H shifter you can change it to smart sequential or you can just change this to sequential or uh, real automatic or simple automatic I think that I'm not 100% sure, but the real automatic might actually uh, skip a few gears down low uh, instead of running through, you know, 18 gears. Because I don't know if it shows in here. It doesn't really say. Because a lot of, uh, like, there's auto shift uh, transmissions, so it'll be an 18 speed that shifts automatically. Or there's an automatic, like a true Allison automatic. So there's different versions of automatic transmission in a in a semi. And I think with this game, it doesn't give you an Allison uh, automatic. I, I don't know. I'd have to experiment with it, but I'm not super interested in it. But you could mess with it. Uh, sequential is going to be, you're going to need to shift it. So if you have a paddle shifter, you can set the right one for up and the left one for down. Uh, or on a stick, if you have a, a, a six-speed or five-speed shifter, but you don't have a shift knob to get the range and splitter, then what you can do is uh, move your stick forward to shift up and pull it back so you can set that. And so at least you're moving the stick, even if you're not doing it in an H pattern. So that's there. Uh, steering range motion, I have it set to match my steering wheel, which is a G29. Braking intensity, you're going to want to mess around with this different times. So you're going to top in the truck, go wheeling up to a stop sign and go, wow, I got my foot hard on the floor and I'm not stopping. Or uh, you just, you know, you just breathed at it or pointed your foot in that direction and the thing is throwing you through the windshield. So you can move this around. So you slide it to the right, it's going to really brake hard uh, easily. And you move it to the left, it's going to dampen that down a bit. And I like to run it about here. And I find that some trailers with multiple axles, like you've got, uh, you know, uh, trains and um, uh, low boys with, uh, you know, uh, articulated low boys, like doubles and triples and stuff. And the more axles you get on some trailers, they actually model, model that. And you'll get increased braking intensity based on the fact that you got a whole bunch of extra axles of brakes on them. And sometimes you have to slide that around. Right now, I find that setting I have right here about, uh, you know, that's about two-thirds of the way. Um, gives me a good balance. And I'm not getting thrown through the windshield unexpectedly or having to push the pedal too hard. Although I do get caught out every now and then. Truck stability, I just turn it down a little bit. Um, and trailer, because I like when you go into a corner too fast that, you know, the thing's starting to lean and you're going, whoa, that's getting scary. And you, you're going to slow down so you don't uh, dump the thing over. And I like that setting right there because it's not too silly. And, you know, trucks aren't notoriously unstable unless you got a really top-heavy load. And uh, if you have a really top-heavy load, you're going to be driving carefully anyway. But I find those settings. I don't have to mess with them. You know, I could go less. Sometimes I do. If I think that, you know, I really want a challenge and I don't want to be in, I don't like driving in race mode. So put them down, it makes you slow down. 
And uh, drive shaft torque, I just turn it right up because I like it. Uh, although it rotates on the center axis of the truck instead of it should rotate on the uh, right hand frame rail. So the left side of the truck goes up and it should be rotating on the right frame rail. But that's your center of rotation uh, on the when the truck lifts up. The left side goes up, the right side goes down a little actually, but not as much as the left side goes up. And uh, it doesn't rotate on its center line. If you look in real life at a truck, leaving a, an intersection with a real heavy load, it's not rotating down the crankshaft center line. It's rotating on the right frame rail, more or less. Cabin suspension stiffness is, I think that's a new thing in here. But I just turned that down here. I got all these lined up. And I like it. It seems to work. Uneven surface simulation. I got that. Uh, I don't have it right up because it's just too bouncy. Uh, I tried it there for a while, but I find this setting right here, if you're, um, it's a fairly good simulation of the average road. And if you get out of the truck and look from chase view at it moving down the road, you can see the, the wheels doing their thing and everything's moving around just about, just about right. This might even be a teeny bit high, but I like it. So that's, that's where I put that. Uh, trailer cables. I have a, big graphics card so I uh, well big-ish I guess there's better ones now for sure but I turn them all on so what this does is it turns on uh, you can have none so what so the thing is with trailer cables it takes an effort for the uh, computer to render it draw it so you can have none if your uh, CPU and GPU isn't too good you can have first player trailer so that's you you can have player trailers that's if you're in convoy uh, Player trailers and first traffic trailers, so the nearest traffic trailer to you, but the ones that are out in the distance aren't getting drawn. I got them all turned on because my uh, system can handle it. And it's not an issue. Truck speed limiter, I don't use that because heaven forbid. <laughs> I hate being uh, constrained, you know. Uh, rain sensor, I got it turned on. And what that does is if you have it on, and you turn your, I have a rotary encoder for my wipers, but you could have a switch that you push or a keyboard key and you hit it multiple times to go from uh, intermittent to fully on to high speed or whatever. If you leave your uh, windshield wiper at the first setting and you have this on, it'll go to intermittent wipers as soon as there's rain, uh, as soon as there's enough rain for it to activate. And it's kind of cool. I like it actually. Uh, and you can turn it off and just be in charge of your wipers yourself. But the thing that's neat about this is in Europe, ETS, uh, when you you got some long tunnels, and when you get into those long tunnels, the wipers stop because it senses that you're out of the rain. And then when you come back out into the rain, they start up again. That's cool. I like it. Automatic retarder, all this automatic stuff, I don't like it, so I turn it all off. And... Uh, the, this is here, this one's kind of important, and if you're going to drive a lot of tri-axle trailers and um, and you have the rear axle as a lift axle, it's kind of handy in a way, and I'll tell you why. I uh, have it turned off so that I can choose to lift or drop that axle, and it's not always realistic, but, you know, there's times when you have enough weight on, you need those three axles down, but... Yeah, you know, most of the time you're driving around, you don't need them all down. Um, you got a 40,000 pound load on, that's fine. You run it on two axles. Um, you know, you're right at the limit there, I guess. I, here in Canada, you'd be just at the limit, maybe 38,000. But anyway, what you can do, if you're backing up your center, let's look at this here as the trailer. So see all of these things here? Say that's your trailer. And these are one, two, three axles. And your kingpin is up here at the front. And when you're backing up, your center of turning is here on the back axle in the middle of those three axles. So you put this axle up, now your middle of turning is here, and you can back up tighter. Or if you're in tight maneuvering, you're less risk of going forward and dragging the back of your trailer into the corner of a building or a vehicle. So it increases your maneuverability by being able to lift that back axle. So that's why I make this up to me. So I can lift the, if, if it's a rear lift trailer, 
rear axle, I'll lift it up and get more maneuverability and uh, when I need it. And even, you know, I do it at times, it's totally unrealistic where you would have to have it down for weight, but it's an option. It gives you the option, so you're in control of that. So you can deselect that and have fun with it and just see how that changes, especially on backup, how it makes your trailer more maneuverable. And that few feet makes a difference of uh, getting that back axle off the ground. Air brake simulation I leave on. And what that does is if you're in a tick, tricky situation and you're pumping on the brakes and backing up and doing your thing and maneuvering and like me trying to learn to do B-doubles, you know, you I set the uh, uh, air brake warning and you know, ran out of air and had to wait for it to pump up uh, quite a few times because, I mean, I didn't get it overnight. I had to practice at it. And uh, so it's realistic. Like you run out of air, you run out of air. And the, th the way uh, air brakes work, if you didn't know, is the air brakes allow the brakes to be released. And there's a great big spring in those pots on the axles. And that great big spring is pushing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, arm on it and the cam in the brakes and putting the brakes on if there's no air. And so you use air to keep the brakes off. So when you hit the brakes in a semi... Uh, or any truck with there, it could be a, a chassis, a straight truck. What happens is you're uh, venting air out of the system at the brake. Uh, there's a brake valve that reduces the air that's holding the air brakes off and it's allowing the brake to come on with that automatic spring pressure. And so the deal is, is if you've lost air and you're rolling down the highway, you, you know, you see the skid marks on the highway every now and then where you see these big black skid marks and it's usually a semi losing a uh, trailer air and the brakes slam on so that's how that works air brake simulation it's cool i like it realistic fuel consumption have turned on uh here's some important stuff for cruise control for and this comes in super handy um in um what is it called again special transport so i have the cruise control step set to 5k or five miles an hour and so what that means is when you're in cruise control and you have a button to go up or down with this, you can bump your increment. So say, for example, you're going 63 miles an hour and you hit the cruise control, but you want to be going 65. Well, your cruise control is now on. You hit the up button and it'll take you to the next increment up that's five. And so that would be 65. It doesn't take you to 68 miles an hour. It takes you to 65. So if you want to round up to where you want to be, you want to go 70 and you're doing 66, 67, you hit the cruise control, hit it up one, you're going to be going 70. And then anywhere up and down from there, you go into a 65 zone, hit it down once, you're at 65. Really nice. Now, smart cruise control, the tolerance, I set it to zero. And where this is handy is in special transport in particular, because you set it at 40. Set your cruise control at 40 and you go down a hill, you're not going to run up on the back of the pilot car. That's going to hold you. There's zero tolerance. So it's uh, this works in, if you have a retarder in the transmission. I, I, mean, I, don't, I haven't tested to see if it works without, but I generally select, select a transmission with a retarder, even though that's not realistic uh, for an 18 speed uh, or 13, 10. That's an automatic thing. But anyway, it's really cool tip. So if you're in special transport, you're not always dicking with your speed and having to, you know, try and stay off the back of the pilot car. Set that at zero. This adaptive cruise control. I have it set to, I think, is that the max? Oh, no, there's the max. Yeah, let's move it up there. And I'm still learning this. I've got a button now to activate and deactivate it on my dash so that I could just turn it off. I don't have the brake, uh, emergency braking system working because I don't. I like to be the dude doing the driving and not all this computer stuff. Other than cruise control, I love. Uh, automatic blinker turn off. What that does is when you got it on and you see your left to turn left and then you bring the wheel back to the right, just like in your car or truck, it's going to turn the blinker off. And that's a good thing. Cabin accessories physics, that's on. And what that does is if you got a mic cable or you got your um, uh, air freshener hanging down, they'll be wobbling around. 
uh, he, and he, you know it's just a little extra load on your GPU and if you your graphics card and if you're on the limit with it turn that off if you're not if you're not bothered by it turn it on camera settings uh, I don't use any of these because I'm using a uh, Toby if you turn this on and then you can set this thing here this is I guess where I used to run it right in the middle if you turn it on when you turn the steering wheel to the left after a little while your view will turn left and if you turn the steering wheel to the right your view will turn to the right so it's okay um, but if you don't have Toby or eye tracking or what's that called track IR or something if you don't have those things then you could use that to experiment with it and try it and use the slider to change the amount of rotation you're getting so yeah if you don't if you don't have a head tracking try it and then what you can do is mess with it but uh, blinker camera rotation that was uh, I tried that too before I had Toby and I clicked that on so you'd hit the signal light and it would move your view to the direction of the signal you just engaged mess with it regional settings you can goof around with this uh, you know this is man <laughs> I should try it sometime you know I should put French on there because hey, I'm Canadian and I'm supposed to know some French I used to I grew up in a fairly bilingual part of the country and as a kid that would be fun but this is probably uh, Parisian French and it's way different than oh Quebec look at that Francais Quebec man bon I should try it anyway <laughs> I'll do that I'll mess around with it on my own that's fun that's gonna be fun I can try that okay uh, currency, I just use US dollars and I do everything in uh, uh, met uh, not metric imperial. It's not really imperial because it's US. Imperial would be, do we have imperial gallons? Yeah, see, that's what we used to have here in Canada. An imperial gallon before we went metric is bigger than a US gallon. So we call them up here. You probably hear Canadians saying 45 gallon drum and you go, what the heck are they talking about? That's small. And in the U.S., it's a 55-gallon drum. And to us, that's, wow, that's weird. And uh, it's because the gallons are different sizes. And just a little side note is when we used to do our mile per gallon fuel calculations, you know, Americans go, man, those Canadian cars get good mileage. <laughs> They're running on big gallons. So anyway, we just leave that at U.S. gallons. And consumption units is default. Let's see what options here. Oh, mile per gallon U.S., yeah, I guess we could just switch it to that just because we're using U.S. gallons. I wonder if I should change it back to Imperial just for the old time's sake. Let's do that for giggles. Yeah, uh, mile per gallon, Imperial. There I go. I feel like I'm back in the, the old days. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's cool. I'll try that for a bit. I don't do any of this chat stuff, so I guess you know figure it out I guess I don't know I don't know I don't even know what it is convoy settings I believe yeah this is tag um, name tag so you can see uh, who the other dudes are in front and back of you and you got a guy ahead of you or the name tag shows on the map too I you know the thing that's fun about turning it off is when you want to take um, screenshots when everybody does their group photo turn them off and then excuse me you have a lot better looking photo without because you notice when you take screenshot in convoy of your buddies your truck doesn't have a, a tag on it the other ones do so if you turn that off none of them do and it makes a lot better photograph and quick replies is this is you can configure things like uh, you, you uh, set them all up to say certain things you can new reply you know you can edit it and you could have things like um i need to pull over or out of fuel or whatever custom ones you can make them up so anyway uh or we're down near the bottom here yeah chat quick reply so there we are so that's going to be the gameplay oh that's quite a bit more than you probably expected to go through but there it is keys and buttons is pretty straightforward this where you do all your mapping i don't have much stuff in here mapped i got these Probably from when my shifter blew up. My uh, for a little while, 
uh, like I've made my own uh, 18 speed uh, shifter uh, conversion. I got a real Eaton Fuller, <laughs> uh, an actual one from a truck dealership uh, or truck supply place in the US. I ordered it and um, converted it. But my first one, I bought a cheap one off Amazon because I didn't want to wreck a good one because you have to, they're air actuated in real life, they run on air pressure. And um, uh, so the switches are valves, really. They're not switches. They're valving air. So you have to convert them. You drill them all, you know, passages. You got to make a little, to get wiring through. And you got to uh, epoxy in little micro switches. And to, and that the levers, or, you know, let's call them the levers that actuate the air switches. You're intercepting their motion with a little switch and that's how you convert them and uh my first one gave up you know it was it was such a poor poorly built thing real for 40 bucks if you're going to try and build one and you're concerned that you might botch it up and you don't want to wreck a 120 dollar shifter get a cheap one and learn how to do it as your as your trial run but anyway mine crapped out i put too cheap a switch in and it broke so I uh, mapped some uh, paddle shifters here. Joy button four and Joy five was paddle shifters, I believe. I don't have paddle shifters anymore because I've moved the wheel center thing off and put a different wheel on my driving things you'll see in the videos. I don't have any of these other ones. Gearbox switched automatic. I don't use any of that. Start stop engines on my key. Electricity is on my key. Parking brake is on my dashboard. Engine brake, uh, I, jeez, I don't have that there, what I got. Oh, yeah, so I used engine brake toggle, and that's that little switch I'm always fussing about or moaning about on my shifter that I put there, that cheap little thing. I, and it's it's not very um, con uh, consistent. It's, it's uh, decrease uh, and increase I've got on a uh, rotary encoder. So I turn the rotor encoder and I go, uh, you know, level three is all the way to the right. I turn left and I can go down to the lowest level if it has different levels. Uh, trailer brake I've got on my dash. You just, you know, that's going to be your um, parking brake. Uh, retarder is that uh, that's really built into automatic transmissions, but uh, I have that on a rotary encoder increase. You know, you can make it a button if you want, and that's going to jump it up or down in steps. Uh, the only time I ever am using it is in the um, to to control the speed in um, my cruise control. Uh, so if I'm going 70, just like with the uh, uh, special transport, if I'm going. 70 miles an hour and then i'm getting into bc and promos canada and there's some big hills it'll hold the truck speed on the downhill pretty good uh you know be which is unrealistic <laughs> but it does it and it saves you a lot of brakes or just running the jake all the way downhill at uh, a huge rate of decibels anyway uh here's that lift drop axle so that's the one on for the truck this is the one for the trailer that i was mentioning earlier where you can do your drop axle manually if you deselect automatic trailer drop axle. Diff lock, always important. And uh, that's a good one. It actually works like a diff interlock in the game. So in real life, a tandem semi uh, has the front drive axle. The front axle is your drive axle. And the rear one is along for the ride unless you put the interlock in which locks the two together. And if you ever notice that rear drive shaft angle, is it some, it's got some crazy angles on it. And um, you don't want to run a load through that at a higher speed because you'll know, blow up those universal joints. So you only run it uh, at low speed when you're stuck. So a semi running down the road beside you at 70 miles an hour doesn't have that rear axle uh, locked into the system. It's just running on the front axle. So, this is what's really happening in the game in the game it's really an interlock the differential lock locks the axle side to side and uh that's super handy man that's uh, save your bacon in snow and mud and 
Uh, I had a truck without it. I had one with it. And man, I'm telling you, life with it is good. <laughs> life without it, not so much. You're always putting tire chains on, like, uh, if you don't have it. And with it, it'll get you out of trouble. And doesn't mean you don't have to use chains. You should still do, but thing with the when the lock when you put the lock on in real life the truck just wants to go straight because you're getting all this grip on the back but you're in a slippery situation well that means the front end is in the same slippery situation but you don't have chains on those tires and so it wants to make you go straight off on snowy corners so be careful with it if you if you, <laughs> anyway that's irrelevant it doesn't happen in the game uh Front suspension up down, you know all of that stuff. I've got it all mapped on switches on my dashboard. Uh, you got a reset that just puts it back where it was. I wish they had a reset to put it to your lowered position. That would be cool. Instead of having to mess with them all again. Oh, uh, that's your signal signal switches. I've got that mapped to switch on my dashboard. Uh, well, I've got a signal switch on the left of my steering wheel. Um, what else? Hazard warning. This is all straightforward. This is all straightforward stuff. So you got an air horn and a horn. I don't use the horn because, I mean, it sounds like a Volkswagen. Uh, if you have a Volkswagen, my apologies. But, um, yeah, so I just use the air horn. A light uh, horn. No, don't even know what that is. Wipers, that's on a rotary encoder. And so I have wipers up, wipers back, and you can do the same thing. You can have wipers on a single button and it'll cycle through, or you can put it on two button buttons. So you go one button, whatever it is you're using, up, and the other button could be down. Like you could use page up and page down on your keyboard, whatever. Cruise control. Uh, I have that on my... Uh, I took the steering wheel center out of my G29 and mounted it on my dashboard. And so there's the hat. So cruise, and uh, I think uh, was it uh, Platy was saying he has the same setup. Uh, control, yeah. So joy hat up is turns it on. Uh, and resume I have down, and to the right increase the speed and left. And remember that five mile an hour increment thing. This is where that happens. So I want to increase. Or I just set it at 63 miles an hour. I want to increase to 65. I would hit it once. It would go to 65. 70, I would hit it again. And it would jump her up. So that's how that all works. Uh, adaptive cruise control mode. So I made this button here to turn it off and on. And that's one of the buttons from my uh, place. Or the, what do you call it? Uh, G27 wheel center that I relocated. Dashboard display mode. That's the little thingy in the middle of your dash between the instruments. And uh, I've got it on the rotary switch, that big red thing, that knob on a G29. I just turn it clockwise and it cycles. Uh, infotainment display mode. That's uh, one of the buttons on my dash panel. Navigation zoom mode. Uh, same thing. Trip info reset. I don't have that button what i have is uh we'll see a trim uh, when we get to the hud settings i have um a cycle it just goes through them all i they, they got a lot of redundant controls here the windows i have on my dash panel here we go a uh, show hide uh oh i still have that enabled show hide side mirrors on screen yeah i don't use that i should re uh, purpose that button I used to use those mirrors when I first got the game because I was really troubled by the little mirrors or the vision not being very realistic in the mirrors, but I've grown to become accustomed to it and I don't use this anymore, as you notice uh, in the videos. Root advisor modes. So that's why I don't use this trip info reset. I think the root advisor modes, oh yeah, that um, turns my uh, map on. So it'll bring the navigate the I like to use the navigator on the truck. I don't use that overlay, but this will turn that overlay on. And then if I click it again, it'll go to the smaller mode uh, without the that extra window at the bottom of it. And if I click it in the opposite direction, um, I think that's, uh, which way does it go? 
Root Advisor Navigation Page. Oh, yeah, this is if I click the button up, it does what I just mentioned. If I click it down, it'll uh, zoom the thing in and out, or it'll cycle through the zoom level. So one, two, three, four, and then back to the top. I don't use any of these other ones except Root Advisor Next Page. So if I hit this, it brings the Root Advisor up, and then I keep clicking it, it runs through the cycles. I don't need all that other stuff they're talking about up here. So you'll find you don't need to map every one of these buttons. It's crazy. Like you, how do you remember what everything is? Like you just roll with it. You know, you just cycle through. It's with more, you know, a simple setting. Here's that. Uh, I don't use next camera. I don't cycle through them that way. I select what I want. My interior camera. So this is kind of important. If you wonder how I'm always jumping around with the views in the videos, my middle mouse button, I push it down, and I, if I've been outside the truck, I jump right back behind the wheel. So that's how I get back behind the wheel in a hurry. The chasing camera, if I want to get outside real quick, I hit my right mouse button, and I'm out behind the truck. I'm scrolling all around. I'm looking up in the air. I'm looking at a parking thing or whatever. So right mouse button, if I want to jump back in middle, I want to get back out right. So those are those two mouse buttons. Super handy. Top down, I don't use it. Roof camera, that's uh, the one you see me pushing the little button on my uh, G29 steering wheel center on the dash. Lean out camera, same thing. Bumper camera, same thing. And drive by, same thing. I'm using the uh, the square, the triangle, the zero or zero or whatever, O, oh, and the X for all of those camera settings. <clears throat> Zoom interior camera, I have it on that plus minus button. I have it on the plus and I use that to, if I want to see in the mirror, <clears throat> I'll turn my Toby or my eye tracking, I'll, I'll look in the mirror, hit the zoom button and I can get a better view of what's going on in the mirror. Uh, it's very, very handy and it's also handy for looking at the truck gauges. So if you want to see what the gauges actually are, what they're doing on the truck, and you can't really tell, you can zoom in and look at them, which is really handy. I, I do that on every new truck or new dash or whatever. I look at them, I'll see what they all are, figure out what the gauges are, and then where I'm looking at what happening uh, as it happens uh, in the game. So if you want to identify them, uh, zoom into your camera, map that to something. I don't use this stuff. Look left, look right. I'm using the Toby. So that's uh, steering base camera rotation. You can enable enable it. And you had those settings we were looking at in the uh, control settings. So that'll enable it there. Walk mode. I just use it. Now this is stupid. I, I got I to gotta put this back on the keyboard. So I have it on the... Uh, I'm, and I've unfortunately gotten used to it. So if I'm in the shop and I'm outfitting the truck... And I want to jump around and look at different things on the truck in walk mode. I got to reach over here through the steering wheel with my left hand, use the mouse with my right hand, and I can use these hat buttons to uh, walk around. I don't often crouch or run, so I mean, those are probably default settings. I don't use any of this photo mode stuff, I don't think. Oh, this activation while driving. I don't have that activated in this profile, so I got to do that. I have two buttons I got to set for that. I'll do it right now. I'll click it, push it. And this one over here I've got set to my, uh, on my stream deck. And I, I made the button N uh, on stream deck. I just, because I don't use N for anything on the keyboard. So that's how a stream deck works. You map a, a hotkey to it. And then I made it end. So when I push it on the stream deck, the computer thinks I'm pushing the end button on the keyboard. So what that does is I have it right underneath my pause button. So when I'm recording in my OBS, I hit pause and then I hit that uh, button right away. And I'm in photo mode. So that's a new thing I started doing. Take picture. I've got it as uh, it says enter and what that is, is enter, um, I map to a switch on my um, dashboard. So where I have my escape uh, switch, uh, I have, um, when I push it the opposite direction, it takes a photo. 
So I can snap a photo anytime when I'm driving. Just click with the button. Toggle photo settings. It says space. I don't know. I don't use it. So these things here. Super, superfluous two requirements. <laughs> I don't use them. Activate is... Uh, that's my uh, enter button. I'm using the center button on that red dealy bobber on the uh, G29 steering wheel center. Trailer attach or detach is mapped to a switch in my dashboard. Menu, um, menu, menu, menu. That's my um, button on my dashboard, the equivalent to escape. Escape, you can't unmap. So in the game, you can't do anything with that that's escape on your keyboard so i have a button map to do the same thing on my dash quick save you see me use this the other day in the trucky tutorial trucky dispatch so quick save uh quick load um real important so you do a quick save then you do your trucky dispatch stuff then you quick load it audio player so this is the Rotary, rotary encoder. So if I push the button, uh, hit the, you know, push it in, uh, it'll bring up the audio player. If I turn it right, that's going to be volume up. If I turn it, see, it's still button five here. If I turn it left, it's going to be volume down. Uh, is that? Yeah, that's on that one. So also, if I, um, oh wait a minute, I've got that wrong. Sorry. If I hit that button that'll bring up the audio player if i turn it right or left it's going to be next favorite or previous favorite but what will happen is if i just that if you push the button it's going to bring up the audio player menu on the screen so you'll stop driving and you're stopped you're looking at that darn screen and you're picking a tune it's kind of a bummer so the next favorite if i just reach over while i'm driving and i turn the key I'm still driving. I don't stop, and I'm listening to tunes. It'll and I can scroll through them without stopping. It's automatically. So think of that. If you've got a button mapped to your radio, and you don't want to be taken out of the seat and into the menu, <clears throat> push your next favorite, map a next favorite button, and you'll turn the radio on automatically. Be listening to tunes while you're driving. If you're always set to say Big Rig FM or whatever. It'll just take you right to the radio station. So it turns it on automatically for you. So uh, it's not really clear in this description that that's what that does, but that's a good one. The volume up, volume down, I have on a second rotary encoder. World map, I have map, map to my dashboard uh, button. Garage manager, well, why do I need that? I don't, I probably got a button or two free I could use, but I don't. Screenshot. That's uh, I have a, uh, uh, a button uh, map to that where I can just snap a screen screenshot at any time. And you could do anything you want with your keyboard, anything. Reset head tracking, super important with Toby uh, because the setting different trucks, different scenarios, length of time that you've been using it without resetting, it'll drift. So you just hit a button and it snaps it back to the setting that you set with the um, interior settings, you know, the uh, game settings. Oh, I don't have the pause or any of this stuff. This thing set up. I don't do it. Chat, don't do it. Push to talk, don't do it. Um, I used to have a push to talk when, um, what was that? that uh, I put a second switch over beside my signal switch when that um, convoy first came out. Don't use it. Show name tags. I guess you could map a button to that and turn them off and on. I got to experiment with that. Anyway, that's uh, that's that's gameplay, keys and buttons, controls. We're done audio. Here's the biggie, graphics. Okay, full screen mode, brightness, leave it here. My resolution of my screen is 2560 by 1440. I leave it there. My refresh rate, like my graphics card will run 144. And I can get uh, frame rates up to 162 in the game when I'm out in the middle of nowhere. But I get into town, it comes down. So what I found is just leave it at 60. Like, even though it's a killer graphics card, whatever. It, I find my video uh, presentation is a lot smoother if I just leave it at 60. 
and I mean, it's fine. Vertical synchronization, I have it on. Uh, and I don't imagine why you would, oh, look at this, economic saves energy on notebooks. Okay, so that's, I don't know if your laptop's plugged in, you might just want to leave that enabled. Uh, graphic settings, it says simple settings, but I've, I changed a bunch of stuff. Or do I? Did it? Yeah, I have SSAO turned off. Yeah, so you can go to simple settings and get your baseline so right so that's automatic yeah if i went automatic so i went advanced let's do this i'll just put it all back and i just put it at ultra and say yes and then we go and okay so now we got to go advanced to see what it all was what did it change so it's this is why what i changed so this is ultra that's scaling at 125 i put scaling at 200. Uh, Anti-aliasing, I have, uh, yeah, that's where I run it. SSAO, I turn it off, because that's, I don't understand it. I, it's really messes your picture up big time. And I have a, um, what is my Radeon? It's a um, Asus Tough Gaming uh, RX 6800 XT. It's a hot rod that, uh, it's a very good uh, graphics card, very highly rated from, uh, it's the basic uh, Radeon 6800 architecture, but hopped up by uh, Asus to their tough gaming standard. And it's a good one. But even with that, I turn this off because if you're running this, turn it off and see what changes. You'll probably be happy. Uh, and I think I can run scaling higher. I might try that. I just have it where I have it. Uh, depth of field, I usually turn it off. And I haven't experimented with it lately to see if anything's changed in the game. But with it off, I think I don't notice any big difference. Um, having said that, I haven't tried it, like I say, in probably a year or so. But turn it off if you're finding your game isn't very smooth. Because with the settings I use, my game is very smooth. So, uh, yeah, try these. Make, you know, you can turn the scaling down if your PC's not up to it. Sun shafts, I like. I just love that effect when you're driving into the sunset and you're coming through the uh, leaves of the trees. If your PC will run it, try it. If uh, that uh, you notice that your frame rate starts to get chunky, turn that off. Color correction is turned on. And it makes the colors a little more realistic. Reflection scaling, I believe that's where I run it all the time, 200. And then everything under here, I just run it all at high. Like shadow quality at ultra is a bit of a drain on the system. Uh, another one, uh, weather quality, I guess that wouldn't matter. I could leave it there. I'll try it. Uh, mirror distance, I put it at high, but if you, this is a really important one. Mirror distance and mirror resolution. If you're struggling in your game and you're finding the, the video quality is not what you want, turn those down. That would be, this should be, other than SSAO disabled, depth of field off, come on down here and get that mirror distance because your game is having to render and draw everything in the mirrors to a high degree of accuracy and depth. And it's calculating all of that stuff. Uh, the mirror is a big deal because you think about what the computer is doing. It's everything that's going on ahead of you. It's inverting it and throwing a view at the back. And uh, it takes a fair chunk of power. If you're using that side mirror uh, above the passenger window in your truck, turn it off if you're struggling. I don't even use it anyway because I, ne I never look in it. Like, I mean, if I ever, I've never used it. You know, you get used to the size of your truck and you're driving a certain size vehicle. It becomes normal and you know the size of it. You know where you are on the road. That mirror to me is not necessary. But turn, turn it off. Turn your mirror resolution down and the mirror distance. Turn them down if you're having problems. Texture quality. I have it on high, but the graphics card runs it fine. Uh, Antiscrop. <laughs> Anisotropic filtering. I've got it rayed up. Uh, you can mess around with that slider too. Normal maps. Traffic headlights are on. Secondary vehicle lights are on. Light visibility range is high. So this one can be save you a lot of uh, trouble driving at night. 
So if you turn this to low or disabled, uh, I've, well, I wouldn't go disabled, that's extreme, but low or medium, when you're driving down the highway and it's a interstate or freeway or city with traffic lights, uh, oh, what do you call this? What do you call the big lights in this? <laughs> I don't know. The lights along the side of the highway or the road. The overhead lights? Oh, geez, I'm blowing it. Anyway, when you're driving along, if you have it low, you'll see you're in the pool of one light, and just before you get to the next one, it turns on. So as you're driving down the highway at night, the lights ahead of you are turning on as you go. It seems a little weird. It's kind of like, okay, we're connecting the dots. If you turn it up, they're on at a, at a distance, but it eats up a lot of power in your graphic settings. So you can experiment with that, turn it down, and you could try disabling it if you're struggling and see what happens there. I don't know what that would do. Just turn them off, but mess with it. In pedestrians, you can turn them off or on. And uh, But anyway, th this is where I run my graphic settings. So once again, uh, let's have a look at that. It all seems to work pretty good for me. And I could probably crank more out of it. Uh, but I find that I like the consistency, uh, in particular in videos, uh, when I'm recording a video, that it's not swinging wildly from one super quality thing into a, a bunch of stuttering. So this works. So anyway, I think we're going to leave it right there because that's a pretty long video. Um, but I hope it helps and that you're able to uh, get some joy out of the game. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, uh, you know, for me, the game runs pretty good, but I have a fairly good system. You can see the stats or specs at the bottom of the screen. And, um, yeah, we'll leave it there. Take care, guys. Uh, if you have questions, don't be uh, shy to ask. And, uh, um, yeah, if it's helpful, give the old video a thumbs up because it all helps the old algorithm and gets it out there. <laughs> anyway, take care. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.